after World War II, a new eugenics was resurrected out of the bones and ashes of the old eugenics. The eugenics movement has been at the forefront to establish a new scientific racism that justifies oppression and exploitation and racism. In fact, racism is inseparable from the roots of psychiatry. The entire history of psychiatry, beginning with scientific conclusions that were made in the 1830s, was an effort to prove the intellectual inferiority of African Americans. Benjamin Rush is the father of modern psychiatry. And he is the one that gave us the term nigritude. He said that all blacks have inherited this disease. And this particular disease, it caused them to be inferior. In addition to that, it was the reason why it was very important that blacks remain segregated and separate from whites so that whites did not inherit this disease. Asserting that negritude was a form of leprosy, Rush justified segregation as a medical necessity. And that became an argument to continue slavery. The fact that you have, uh, have brutalized a whole group of people had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with some genetic link and that basically you were just a diseased person. So when a slave master wanted to get rid of a, a recalcitrant slave, they could just say, oh, well, they're, they're suffering from this disease. Draptomania, that is the name of the mental disorder that was contrived by Samuel Cartwright, um, who said that blacks have a mental disorder if they had a desire to run away from slavery. Running away became such a uh, common problem that psychiatrists attempted to give that a disease. He says, but that's a cure for that. And the answer was, the question was, well, what's the cure for that? Frequent whippings, frequent whippings. You'd be surprised how that disease clears up uh, when the lash is put in place of their excuses. After slavery was abolished, psychiatric racism not only persisted, it intensified. The American Journal of Psychiatry officially proclaimed that Negroes, as descendants of savages and cannibals, were ill-prepared for higher civilization, while their pseudoscience eugenics stepped up its racist activities. There is a clear and long and intimate connection between the eugenics movement and the Ku Klux Klan. Harry Laughlin, who was the Carnegie Institution's director of the eugenics record office, had close relationship to the Ku Klux Klan through the publication of a book called White America, which was written by a uh, major Klan leader. So Lachlan wrote a glowing review of the book in the eugenics news. Uh, and at the same time, you have the Ku Klux Klan using eugenics to justify their racist goals. But psychiatric racism wasn't exclusively American. Some of the worst abuses of the 20th century occurred in South Africa, where the government adopted the same racist theories and practices used by Hitler. This was no coincidence. The prime minister had studied eugenics as a psychology student in Nazi-influenced Germany in the 1920s. Dr. Hendrik Verwurst is regarded as the architect of apartheid. Uh, he saw South Africa as a divided state with whites, blacks and brown people living in totally separate areas with uh, black people having no rights whatsoever. With apartheid in place, psychiatrists established mental hospitals throughout the country that were in fact nothing more than slave labor camps. These places operated under a private company by the name of Smith Mitchell and Company. They were saving money through the cheap accommodation for psychiatric patients while making massive fortune out of money that Parliament had appropriated for medication. So it was a corrupt system. When this operation was finally exposed, it was discovered that 67,000 prisoners had perished while at the same time, psychiatrists had collected $117 million in funding from the South African government. The World Health Organization issued a report declaring that psychiatry cultivated racism 
and that apartheid did have a parallel in the ownership and trading of slaves. In 1971, in the United States, psychiatrist Louis Jolly West continued psychiatry's legacy of racism, hatching a secret aversion therapy experiment called the Violence Center. His government-funded plan, implant electrodes in the brains of African-American and Hispanic males to shock them should they exhibit any violent behavior. And if that didn't work, chemically castrate them with drugs. When West's racist proposal met with public outrage, the plan was quickly shelved. Though psychiatry's unrelenting racist theories were blunted, they were not stopped. In 1994, psychologist Richard Hernstein co-authored The Bell Curve, claiming to prove that blacks were genetically disabled and therefore inferior to whites. The Bell Curve um, really argues a very old eugenics idea. It argues that people are born with different kinds of intellectual abilities, that these are inborn pretty much at birth. It goes back to the notion that somehow black people are genetically and biologically inferior to white people as a way to justify what was really its pro programs of social racism and social sexism. And you see that kind of thinking going on in public school testing and IQ testing and educational testing and tracking. And this new tool fit into that old mold. It was a new tool that could prove the intellectual inferiority of African Americans. The psychiatric profession has done great damage, certainly in the past, and far too many in the present, too, to subvert democracy and perpetuate racial stereotypes, even more deep racism in society. We have to battle against this continual uh, misinformation, disinformation, pseudoscience. Uh, it can be repackaged in whatever form or format it is, but if it is based solely upon the color of one's skin and then is the merit of that human being, I just reject it. And so today, the flame of hatred continues to burn, fueled by pseudo-scientific lies. This is the heritage of psychiatry, as a justification for racism and as a pretext for political repression.